be back. We had a little bit of a delay. You know, we had Mardi Gras. We had a lot of things here. And I'm in uh, beautiful uh, Sobe, uh, South Beach, uh, Florida. But let's get along with the, with the lecture of the day. Let's have a, I want to have a, a, a little talk with you. A lot of our things have been humorous, and we've had some scatological references. We've had some uh, references to uh, STDs, and we've had references to certain bodily functions that I think uh, bear investigation. But today, a little bit, a little bit of a serious thing because the topic is pretty serious. And there are a lot of things that are going on out there uh, that you as conscientious, informed, well-read citizens of this great republic are not aware of, and it's not any of your fault at all. It's because for whatever reason, uh, the powers to be in opinion forming, journalism, broadcasting, uh, all of the things that we generally rely on to get our information and to read so we can feel good about ourselves that we're conscious. I'm going to start. We had the Super Bowl, so everybody's in the sports. And, of course, we had the amusement, the, uh, Taylor Swift, uh, Travis Kelsey uh, distraction, if you will, and we had some fun with that. So I'm going to ask you a question, and I'm going to give you – I'm going to have a like second time, but five seconds to give you time to think it. What is the fastest growing sport in America? Okay. Uh, how many of you said pickleball? But you a lot did. I was asked that question. That's what I said. I was 100% sure that I was right. I was not. There is a platform called Rumble. It has $300 million. It is where the right goes. We have a tremendous number of people that go on there. And the fastest growing sport in America is power slapping. That's right. Power slapping. And if you don't think these people are sick, spend a little time watching this. Now, the ones that I've seen so far involve two men. I don't think there's any doubt that we're going to have men slapping women because all of the people that watch this, that are part of the Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey, they all hate women, and 90% of them are, and I've said this before, James, oh, he's a crank. He's a, they're, they're sexually deficient. I'm just being honest with you. That That's, that's what's behind all this, and they are behind this. They're making money off of these people, and there's an entire infrastructure going on out there that you're not being told about, that they have not. Because Rumble has $300 million. The Fox paid three quarters of a billion and didn't break out a sweat. All right. Leonard Leo, who literally, literally has appointed every right wing judge that Trump appointed has a billion dollars. But, oh, oh, well, you know, we're having uh, 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 Washington progressive advocacy groups, they're having wine and cheese parties, they're talking to each other, and they're getting their ass beat. There are other, th other things that you're not aware of, but it's not your fault. Do me a favor, look up the council. For national policy. This sounds innocuous. It sounds like a some maybe good government people getting together, trying to influence some legislation. Uh, it is was founded by I can't make this up. A guy named Tim LaHaye, who was a, a end of times preacher, loonier than a goddamn tune. And it was also formed in, in conjunction with a band is now deceased by the name of W. Cleon Scusen, who was a major influence on the life of, ready, Glenn Beck. All right. And this first president was somebody I've told you about before. I know all these people, Woody Jenkins, 
Tony Perkins, look up the headquarters of Tony Perkins organization in Washington. Bill, it must be worth $25, $30 million. They're all Mike Johnson, totally, totally, and uh, our friend Paul Pressler, all in all of this that you don't know about. And you don't know how dangerous and how goddamn crazy it is. But the other thing that you don't realize, and I have to tell you this, I have to be the bearer of depressing news. They're close to having power. And you say, well, James, come on, these people are goddamn nuts. I mean, like the idea that, that Jesus gave the Constitution to the founding fathers and the First Amendment only protects Christians and, and, you know, everybody knows that Glenn Beck is nuts and everybody knows these people understand they're not going to win the election. And, and I, 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 I keep going to say, but, but they, have, they have financial back at Trump. They have Trump. Trump don't give a shit. They don't know any, no Christianity for, from his ass. But they're all in there. They're supplying the money, they're supplying the, tri- the, the, the troops, they're staying in the shadows, they're smart, they're smart, they're not going to come out, they know that no one in the New York Times or the Post or, or the Net or anything else has the foggiest fucking idea who they are, they're not going to report on it because they're going to say, oh, that's Carville, he's a crank, he's a partisan, he's trying to scare people. He's trying to say that you have all of these crazy, goofy uh, people. Uh, David Barton, look this guy up, the, the historian. And, and oh, we, we can't pay attention to this. We got a couple of big stories here. And uh, why don't you do what they always say they do? Do your own research. So they took completely, the Leo, a billion dollars, the Federalist Society has literally about to take over the entire federal judiciary. And, and oh, well, you know, and they, you know what they got? <laughs> I do. Lifetime appointments. Look at uh, Judge Cannon in Florida. That is what you on the verge get. Now, Trump don't care. They supply the troops. They have the money. They have the influence. And by the way, you don't need. <laughs> you can't compare, James. You can't compare anything to Nazi Germany. That's just you. Just that's not allowed. Polite people don't do that. Okay, so I am supposed to forget, and you are too. That the period 1933 to 1945 never happened in world history. And you should not study it. You should not pay attention to it. You should not extrapolate that there are messages and there are things to learn as a result of of this beyond horrific part of of Western history. Don't, don't, don't concentrate on it. Oh yeah, you got to, you got to, you know, you you know, some most votes they got 33%. And the modern icon, the equivalent of Germany that time was a man named von Poppen. He had everything under control. And so Hitler becomes chancellor and von Poppen says, don't worry, we created him. No, no problem. And people said, well, the, the, the industrialists in Berlin, the, the Krupps and the Ferdinand Porsches and the Mercedes and the BMW people and the, all of the, well, they, they were going to keep him under control. The, the Persian, Persian, Prussian Yunkers. I, I think that's a fancy word for landed gentry. Uh, and, and let's leave it at that. And we know that landed gentry has one interest at heart, and that is the interest of, well, landed gentry. <laughs> and uh, they didn't have it under control. And they don't have Trump under control. And these guys that crack me up, they, they get uh, these billionaires. What, you know, what are they motivated by? So the president of Harvard gives testimony, and it's all 
kind of constipated. It doesn't make much sense. And you have kids on Ivy League campuses protesting the way that the Israelis are handling the Gaza situation. And they're offended. They're just all this starting thing, <clears throat> everything. He's the uh, Ackman guy. He, 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 he He's just disgusted with the whole thing. Of course, Trump had dinner at Mar-a-Lago with Nick Fuentes and Kanye West. Why don't you look up who they are? But you don't hear about that. You know why? Because <clears throat> Trump's going to give these guys a tax cut. <clears throat> at the end of the day, 85% of them, that's what they care about. They, they all fancy themselves. They, 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 they don't want to pay taxes. They don't want to be told what to do. And if you got, if, if some naive left wing offends you, you go crazy. But if the former president of the United States has dinner with a guy who wants to like literally kill all the non Christians, I mean, kill, you understand, like dead. <clears throat> and, you know, Kanye West, I mean, I, that, that guy, you talk about not a full deck, or, or half a quart low, or uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what. Didn't you're looking at that? But no one is offended by that, because in, in, if if you wanted these billionaires not to get mad at you, just promise them a tax cut. And most of them, not all of them, there's some of them that are, are highly principled people, uh, but they're much more the exception than the rule. Anyway, so so here we got <clears throat> Rumble. You got the Council uh, for National Policy, and now huge. We talked about it before, but we're going to talk about it in a little more detail. Christian nationalism, which is the centerpiece of all of this, that is what they all believe in. Now, my friend Rob Rana has a movie coming out. I think. Uh, Friday, I think it's February 16th, called God and Country. It's a film that will do that which no one has taken time to do to you, explain exactly who these people are and what how dangerous they are. Because you understand that they hide behind these names, Council for National Policy. It, that sounds like a nice people, you know, legal women voters or good government types that are just want better national policy. Christian nationalism? Well, no Christian people, but one myself. We know people who, you know, believe in the United States. I, I always describe myself as a patriot, not a nationalist. I, I think there's a very important distinction to be drawn is a nationalist has an idea of blood and soil and land. A patriot has the idea of an idea, that it's the idea that draws us together, not so much the piece of land that we occupy. But they don't want that. The, the ideas that we have, pluralism, tolerance, education. I'm going to the Tulane Book Festival of Walt Eisen puts it on. I'm having a shirt made. And my slogan is book learning, not book burning. But but let me tell you, the Christian nationalist people, the Council for National Policy, all these judges, book burning is great for them. The more books you burn, the less people know, the less people know, the more easy it is to manipulate them or not or just manipulate them into not caring or not knowing are depending on certain news sources that honestly, some of them are well-being and they don't have any idea of what the fuck is going on outside of the 25 people that they talk to on the phone and hang out with every day. So I know this is not as funny as we usually are. It's not very inspirational. We're going to do some more of this stuff. We're gonna, believe me, we're going to have some fun. We're going to, I'm working on some things that, that get ideas that people can do individually to try to do what we can. It is very, very bleak time. It's this infection point we are in our history where to go either way, where they're counting on you not knowing what they're really up to and they're 
feeding these distractions. Meanwhile, they're, they're watching power slap in growing numbers. And, and so far, what I've seen is just men slapping men. I bet you within a month, uh, it's going to be men slapping women because most of these people hate women. You get that. I'm not, I'm not being excitable here. I'm not being James. I'm not getting out there. I'm not floating. If you, I have no, I, I have no doubt if you did a study in these Christian nationalists, or you did a study in the power slap crowd, or you did a study of the anti Taylor Swift idiots, you would find at the core two things. One, they can't get laid. Two, because women find them so offensive and so unattractive and so don't want to be with them, they all hate women. And that's how you get this. There's so much about what is behind this whole insanity to Taylor Swift goofiness. And, but you got to understand something. And I, you know, and I've always said, I think the secret to a, a, a serene life is not to not suffer fools, but to appreciate fools and be entertained by them. However, these people are more than fools. They're like nuts, and they believe this, and they're dangerous. And to some extent, they're all intertwined. The Christian National and the National Institute of Council for National Policy, the whole left behind thing, the whole Glenn Beck, the whole Federalist Society, they all this kind of the same. And what they do is they keep you distracted. They get these names that sound so reasonable and they understand how to manipulate themselves to stay out of the press. Unfortunately, they couldn't get to Rob. I, I highly recommend the movie when it comes out. We'll talk about it with his own here. But understand that there are many serious dangers that I have to warn you about before we start this, which is not going to be a, an enlightening campaign at all. It's going to be a slog. We're going to have a job to do. Of course, the as unenlightening as I think it's going to be, it is essentially critical for the salvation of the United States Constitution. And I, I've been saying this, and I'm going to say it again to you. If we lose this, there's going to be a tombstone, and it's going to read the United States Constitution. It actually, I think, took place March 4th, 1789. It will die sometimes in the year, probably 2027. And, and you know, when uh, Jesse Davis, who was you know, one of the great traitors of, you know, really bad guys, he, he said, that, you know, about, I guess, interesting to know, he, he said the Confederacy died of a theory. And you know, the theory it died of <laughs> is what you hear from these people, states' rights. The Confederate Constitution gave the Confederate, central Confederate government no, no power. So it, you had to, it was, it didn't work. Like the original articles of Confederation, people say, well, you know, they, they wrote the Constitution to give the states power uh, and, and to limit the, actually they wrote the Constitution to give the federal government power, you ignorant fool. That's why we have the Constitution and we couldn't live under the Articles of Confederation because it was a modern right-wing dream document. So I said, died of a theory. And it did. It died of a stupid theory that you could have, I don't know, the Confederate States had 12, 13, I have to count them at some point. And this Constitution is going to die of access. What, what, what are you talking about, access? So if you say, we got to say something about getting a better choice here. They said, man, you can say it, you're right, but if I say something, I'm not going to have access. Or people say, you know, if I if I say something bad, 
then I could, then I'm not going to get my, my pharmaceutical clients or my financial roundtable clients. I'm going to get bags out. People in the Congress say, oh, man, you know, I got, I got two nominees up there for, for federal bench. I'm getting an overpass. I'm getting a runway. I, I can't say anything. Uh, reporters, well, if I go out too far on a limb, then I can return my phone call. In other words, what, what's going to really kill this country is people protecting access more than they're willing to protect the Constitution. And that's the way it works. I, I, it, it pains me to be the bearer of this kind of news to you. And But because you stick with me when we have funny and entertaining things, I feel like as your professor, I have some obligation to tell you what I think is going on in the country. And by the way, I think it because I'm pretty sure that I'm right. And I have some obligation to tell you how your trusted sources are not bringing all of this to light. Now, wait, I don't, I think it's part of conspiracy. And, uh, no, I think they're just so in to the way things have always been done and don't want to think about this and don't know people like this or they don't run across them at dinner parties or their kids don't go to college with them. Uh, they don't have any experience with it. It's a lot of trouble, it, you know, and who's going to believe you anyway? Well, you better study this and you better believe it because it's coming for you. If you don't think Mike Johnson <clears throat> is all wrapped up in this insanity, you're out of your mind. If you don't think that Gorsuch and Thomas and Alito <clears throat> Barrett's are all in, entrenched in this kind of stuff. And you're going to lose the Constitution. When you lose the Constitution, you're going to lose the country that you knew and loved. So we've got a lot more to talk about in the future. I promise you we're going to have more more fun, more upbeat uh, presentations in this classroom. But, you know, you, you can't go around and use Harvard words like veritas. Well, if you don't, where there's no truth, there's no veritas. You get those little lamps, you know. It's all bullshit. Because they're not telling you, some people are, be it, pay attention, watch Rob's movie, understand what you're dealing with, understand what you're up against, understand the nature of the threat. And, uh, you know, I tell you, don't wait on orders from headquarters. Don't wait for them to inform you. Don't wait for that. Because they're not. Because they don't understand. It's what Jesus Christ said on the cross. He said, uh, my, my favorite quotes in all of history, he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Now, they're not evil as crucified Roman soldiers, but they know not what they do. And they're incapable of learning it. And if I don't tell you, you're not going to know. And I hate to be the bearer of this kind of news. I like being popular guy, old grandpa, crank. Oh, there goes old Carville. He's, he's, he's kind of out there. You know, not a bad guy. Maybe not schooled in policy differentials and that kind of stuff as we are. Now, the truth of the matter is I kind of am. And I got to tell you about it. So we'll... Get this little puppet cranked up again next week. I don't know where I'm going to be, but we'll get rolling. And until then, uh, stay tuned, stay informed, stay in touch. Thank you. <laughs>